So, uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the secrets of healthy living and something for science called natural hygiene, the science of health. So, uh, let's start with, with my story, you know. So, here I don't know if you can see this photograph, but this is what I look like about 20 years ago, okay. And it is a common joke. My friends just ask me, okay, so how many months pregnant are you, you know. When is the delivery date? So, it got so bad, you know, when I used to go for friends who were getting married and I used to stand at the wedding, I used to get tired just standing, imagine, you know. And then I said, this can't go on and then I was going to get married and then I said, I have to lose weight. I tried everything. I tried dieting, but you know, I need to eat and if I don't eat, I get irritable. I can't work. I can't study. I tried exercise, you know. Those of you, I might have seen me many years ago jogging on Marine Drive with dumbbells in my hand, but at the end of it, I used to have a can of Coke and then that was it. So, nothing really worked. I was 100 kgs plus. And then a, a friend of mine took pity on me and gave me a book called Fit for Life as a gift, which I started reading and it said a new way of eating. I said, okay, let's try this and see if it works. And it did. Magically, I lost one kg in the first week and one kg the next week. And soon I had lost, in a couple of years, I lost 25 kgs. I was a lot healthier, fitter. I said, hey, this is, looks like something good. So then I started studying a little bit more about it. I attended courses. I read books. I went to conferences. I met the gurus. And I learned this something called natural hygiene. It's a science of health. You know, uh, all the conventional medicine, etc., allopaths, the homeopaths, they're, the, they're experts in disease. They know how to treat sick people. They know how to handle the disease. But the science of health, how to stay healthy, that's something which people haven't paid much attention to. And there are many things which we can do, which are simple things, you know. Some things we do unknowingly. We don't know these things are harmful for our health. So we do them without knowing actually how harmful they are. And some things we, are, we know they're good, but we don't pay so much attention. So we don't do those either. So, I'm going to tell you these little secrets. They're quite simple things actually and uh, they will definitely help you uh, if, should you choose to follow them. But of course, what I want to say is I'm not saying do this or don't do this. Okay. It's all very individual. Each one of us is unique and unique individual. What works for me may not work for you. The only way to find out is to try. Give it a 30 day trial, see how it works, see if it suits you and then if it makes sense then you know go ahead for it. So, if you want to be healthy, what are the things you need to take care of? As per natural hygiene, there are 25 different things which you can have, which you have to pay attention to. There are stuff like, you know, the physical stuff, mental, emotional, spiritual. And obviously, I've got 18 minutes here and all of which I think 3 minutes are already gone. So, I don't think I can cover all the 25 different things. But I shall focus on one major thing, which is, you know, the food that we eat. And I'll, the bulk of my talk, I'm going to talk about food. Now, why is food so important? You know, I'll tell you a little story. A guy went and bought a Mercedes vehicle, you know, a C-class or S-class, top of the line. He paid a fortune for it. And after one week, he went back to the workshop and said, hey, it's not working properly, you know. When I started, it doesn't start. It makes a noise. It, it sputters. There's this white smoke coming out. It's not a smooth drive. So the guy said, this is crazy. This is a brand new top, top of the line automobile. How can it give such problems? He asked him a lot of questions and, you know, everything seemed to be fine. He finally asked him, you know, what is the fuel you use? He says, kerosene. So he says, oh, so that's the problem. So he simply removed, stopped using kerosene and started using, you know, the 93 octane petrol or whatever and everything was fine. So the fuel that we put into our cars, we pay so much attention to that. You know, we want the highest grade fuel, but what about the fuel we put into our bodies? Do you know in a, hum in a human lifetime, how much food goes through our digestive system? It's 25 tons. 25 tons of food is being eaten by us on a, and, and that's the kind of stuff that's going inside. So, it naturally makes sense that these things make a significant impact on your health. So, uh, what kind of food? And there's so much conflicting advice. Some people tell you this, Mediterranean diet, Paleo diet, South Beach diet, this diet, that diet, hunter-gatherer diet. You, know, you don't know. How do you figure it out? So, well, natural hygiene kind of simplifies things. And let's talk, and in today's talk, I'm going to talk about five things, you know, the Foxy Five. The five things that, well, a little bit dodgy. I'll tell you about them, and then you can decide whether you want to eat them, or how much of them you want to eat, how often do you want to eat them. And then, then the, there's the Fabulous Five, things which you should be having. And there's a Friendly Five. This is not food, but other stuff that is related to health. So let's start with the Foxy Five. The first one is about uh, animal products, non-vegetarian food, meat, chicken, fish, egg, the works. So, you know, we all know, we all have a tandoori chicken or not all, but many of us tandoori chicken or maybe a Kentucky fried chicken or, a, you know, Big Mac or Rogan Josh or whatever, a steak, sizzler. 
we all know it's not very good for health. But is it really bad? Is it really harmful? Well, it turns out that actually it is. So, uh, there have been studies done and I don't have the time to go into it here. I recommend you to go to a website from the PCRM, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And there are links, regular consumption and a lot of consumption of animal products are linked to, now hold your breath, kidney disease, heart disease, even cancer. Now, why kidney disease? Animal products are very high in protein. When you digest protein, the byproduct is nitrogen and it puts a lot of load on the kidneys to get rid of the nitrogen. Okay, why heart disease? Animal products are full of saturated fat that encourages the body to make more cholesterol, clog your arteries and you enter to end up having, uh, you know, heart disease. And what about cancer? Well, the first thing is hormones. Meat has got a lot of hormones that causes, you know, uh, our body to make more hormones. Breast cancer, prostate cancer. Another important thing is milk has got no fiber, zero fiber. Uh, sorry, meat has got zero fiber. Fiber is extremely important to health. It provides roughage in the diet. It ensures a clean and perfectly functioning digestive tract. And if you have a lot of meat which has very little fiber, the problem is that you don't get enough of fiber and then you end up stuff like colon cancer. So these are the problems which you, you know, end up having with meat. And, uh, and of course, the other thing, you know, uh, these are two chemicals, they are called HCAs, heterocyclic amines and PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. You don't have to remember the names, but you know, just look for, you can go to the National Institute website, when you cook meat at very high temperatures, these kind of chemicals are released and they get into your body and they create all these problems. So, what I am trying to say is, I don't mean that you should, you know, drop all this immediately and you know, go vegetarian or go vegan, but just think that these are the increased risks from consumption of this product. So, how often and how much do you want to have? You don't have to go all the way, but every little step that you take, which kind of, you know, reduces your consumption of these products will definitely help your health. And it's not just about your health, it's about the health of the environment. So, for example, do you know that, so we, all know, we all know about the global warming problem, even though certain Mr. Trump may not quite believe in that. So, uh, but the greenhouse gases, almost... 12 to 14 percent of greenhouse gases are caused by animal agriculture and another 12 to 14 percent is caused by deforestation. You know, when you want to do farming, when you want to do, you know, dairy and you want to grow, you know, cattle for beef, you have to clear up a lot of forests and that reduces the trees and that reduces the amount of oxygen being, uh, being produced and the carbon dioxide being taken out of the system. So, a lot of this, in fact, more than cars and automobiles, animal agriculture is the cause for greenhouse gases. And the other thing is water. Uh, you'd be surprised to know that to produce 1 kg of, say, uh, meat and 1 kg of wheat, it takes 10 times as much water to produce the, the meat. And even economically, if you feed an animal 10 kg of, wheat, of, of grain, you get 1 kg of meat. It's much more economic to eat the grain directly instead of feed it to the animal and the animal converts into all kinds of stuff, including poo, and you're going to only really get 1 kg out of it. So, from that perspective also, it's a, it's a problem. So, from the personal health perspective, from the health perspective of environment, you know, I would strongly urge you all to look at this aspect and then decide for yourself, you know, how much and how often you want to consume. But of course, the one question that, you know, I get asked is, oh, but what about my protein? You know, where am I going to get my protein from if I don't meet? Well, actually, you know, there are a lot of plant products which give protein. In fact, even rice and potatoes has got protein. And mother's milk, you know, which is the food on which we subsist for the first six months of our life, exclusively is supposed to, has only 1% of protein. And there are a lot of examples. Uh, look at this guy. His name is Patrick Baboonian. He's one of the world's strongest men. I mean, he's, I saw a video of his, you can check it out on YouTube, some 500 pounds he just picked up and he walked like this as if he was going for a walk in the park, literally, you know. So extreme, one of the world's strongest men and he's 100%, you know, meat free. If you look, so this is strength. If you look at stamina, you can uh, Google for Scott Jura. He's one of the world's top ultra marathon runners. He's run 264 kilometer races and won all kinds of things. Or if you look at speed, Carl Lewis, one of the uh, major uh, sprinters, he, had, he was also on this kind of a diet. So all I'm saying is it's possible. It's not impossible, you know. So this is one part I don't want to talk to you about. So this is about, you know, the animal products, the first of the Foxy 5. Second one is something which you would maybe heard of, you know, this is our milk. I mean, all of us grew up on a milk diet, right? Our, our mother said, oh, Vita, have you had your milk? 
before going to school, you know, your milk moustache, dude, 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 pure glass full, all those kind of things, you know. So, uh, the point is that, uh, is it really good for health? I mean, I mean, it must be, right? Everybody drinks it, you know. It must be good for health. But is it really? First thing I want to tell you about milk is, milk is species specific. You know, a cow makes milk for the calf. Uh, a dog make uh, a, a cat makes for the kitten, a uh, donkey for the donkey, the elephant for the elephant, baby elephant. Milk is species specific. Why? Because first of all, the antibodies that are there in the milk to protect the, the child against the disease is for that particular species. So mother's milk protects the baby from diseases which human beings have. And no animal drinks milk of another species except one animal. You can guess who that is. You know. Second thing is, there's something called the age of weaning. All these mammals, they drink milk up to a particular age and then they stop. Why? That's because milk sugar is called lactose. To digest that, you need an enzyme called lactase. And that disappears from the human intestine once you grow up. In fact, many people don't have lactase at all. In fact, let me show you a study. Three out of four Indians have got no milk tolerance. They can't digest milk. And then you have all kinds of stomach problems, acidity, GERD, acid reflex, irritable bowel syndrome. You know, and this is a study, I mean, I've given the link there, those who are interested can look at it later. And the funny thing is, in, the, in Europe, 50 grams of lactose is what they test on to see if you are intolerant or not. In India, 25 grams does a trick. We can't even handle 25 grams of lactose. So, this is a serious problem. So, actually, if you go to see, we as a human beings are having milk of another species, Beyond the age when we are supposed to be having milk. So what we are doing is actually something like this. I don't know if you can see the image. Is this natural? It can't be. I mean, if you argue with me about meat eating, okay, maybe you are an Eskimo, you have to eat fish, or maybe you are a hunter, you need... So there is, could be some logic, some, some reason for having occasional meat products. But as far as dairy is concerned, there is absolutely no logic. And it's a separate TED talk, how we started drinking milk. Maybe they'll invite me again next year. We can talk about that. But this is not natural. This is not supposed to be having. So what happens to us when we have such kind of food, which is not meant for us? Milk is high in fat, high in protein, high in and zero, zero fiber again. So we end up getting heart disease. We end up getting diabetes. We end up getting cholesterol. We end up getting cancer even. Again, I'm not making this up. You can go to the website of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, and check it out. And there are actual medical studies done, you know, which prove the link, increased risks of all these diseases linked to consumption of these products. You know, and uh, okay, fine, he said, fine, great, this is all very good, you know, but, you know, our country, our culture, our history, Krishna used to drink milk, you know, and then what about all the Ayurveda and everything? Yeah, that's fine, you know, but that milk was very different than the milk we get today. In those days, you had a cow who was fed on grass, calf was along with it. The calf fed first and whatever little bit was extra maybe used for medicinal purposes or small amounts, fresh. And what we have today is completely different. You know, you, you don't know the milk that you are getting, where it has come from. It's not come from one cow. There may be hundreds, thousands of small farmers who take the milk, go and give it to a big dairy. It's all mixed into a vat and then it comes to you. You don't know where it's come from and you don't know what is in it. This is a study done in Hyderabad about three years ago. You know, I'm not sure if you can read it, but I'll just read out part of it. They tried to see what are the adulterations done to milk. Sucrose and skim milk powder were present in 22% and 80% of the samples. Urea, utilizers and salt were present in 60%, 26% and 82% of the samples. Formalin, detergents and hydrogen peroxide was present in 32%, 44% and 32% of the milk samples. This is the kind of stuff that's getting into the milk that we are drinking. This is not what Krishna drank. This is not what the Ayurvedic people were recommending as, you know, medicine. And it's not just about this kind of uh, adulteration. The most common adulterant in India in milk is, guess what? Water. Why? They want to make more of it, right? Water is cheap. And what water do you think they put into the milk? Do you think it is reverse osmosis treated, boiled, filtered water? No, sir. If there are any pesticides in the water, any heavy metals, everything gets into the, into the milk that you are having. You know. Besides that, you know, the, there are other things. In order to increase the milk production, you know, the farmers uh, put a lot of hormones, oxytocin into the, into the cow. And I don't even get there, you know, as to how it is actually done. And as a result of this, what happens is that the, 
cow often gets something called mastitis, which is a swollen udder. If you saw the previous, the previous slide, you know, you see this udder. It's, this may be exaggeration, but they really have this problem. And now because they have this problem, what happens is they put a lot of antibiotics into the, into the feed. And all of this gets into the cow's milk, you know. And uh, this is at the University of Spain. This is the kind of stuff that you find inside your bottle of milk, you know. And uh, in India too, there's a study done in Haryana by the National Dairy Research Institute. I've given the link, you can have a look. It's not so bad, but you know, it is a problem. And this is causing antibiotic resistance in us. The, the drugs we take no longer work. And then, you know, we have to have stronger drugs and superbugs and all this kind of problems. So, for all these reasons, you know, uh, it's something which we really have to look very, very carefully at. And the final part on top of the book I want to talk about is about the ethical concerns. You know, milk is something which a mammal produces to nourish its young, right? And it only produces milk when it is delivered the baby and the baby has to be nursed. How do you think a cow produces milk all the time? It make it pregnant every year. How do they make it pregnant? Do you think it happens naturally? More than 30% of the cows in India are artificially inseminated. And I don't even want to go how they do it. If I showed you the videos, I'd probably get, you know, thrown out of here. You know? So, it's a, not a very friendly practice. The cows, at the age of two, they start making them, uh, impregnating them. And they do it for about four or five years. After that, the cow is spent. You know, you imagine what would happen to a, any female if you impregnated every year. And after that, what happens? They don't want to do anything with the cow. They, the cow has a lifespan of 20 years. Now, after five years of giving milk, it can't give any more. It's expensive to feed it. So, just give it away to somebody at a low price. And then, what happens to it? It's either abandoned, left to starve, or it is sent for slaughter. All the gaurakshaks you find about, or reading about these days, you know. This is what happens. That's why India, you know, is the largest producer of milk, but it's one of the largest exporters of beef. Where does the beef come from? From these kind of cows who are no longer giving, uh, you know, uh, milk. And the other thing is the calves. You know, within two to three, two, two to three days of the birth, the calf is separated from the mother. You can imagine how much trauma that causes to the mother. And it's, the calf is fed on milk, milk substitutes or allowed to suckle a little bit and that's it. And very often, the male calf is of no use at all. So, what happens to it? The same thing, right? So, there's a lot of cruelty going on, you know, a lot of cruelty. In fact, some people say that it's, it's more cruel, you know, you'd rather kill the cow and eat the beef. At least it's a one-time, you know, offense. But if you're keeping it alive and torturing it literally, you know, for all its, for all its life, it's a much, much worse thing. So, you know, all this is, is a problem with dairy. And of course, the, the standard question is, but what about my calcium? Where am I going to get calcium from if I don't drink milk? Well, actually, the, yes, milk has got a good source of calcium, but along with calcium, it's got a lot of protein. And the protein, what happens is, you have calcium in your bones and you have calcium in your blood. And the body has to maintain, a, you know, we can't become acidic. Protein digestion is, creates a lot of acidity in the body and you need to, the body needs to withdraw calcium from the bones to, acid, to neutralize the acid. And this calcium goes out in the urine. So, there are a lot of studies that have done which show that, you know, the more milk you drank, the more bones you broke because it didn't really give you protection. Again, you go to the PCRM website, you'll find all the information about that. And there are a lot of plant products which give protein, teal seeds, leafy greens, a lot, of, a lot of them. And the other important thing I want to tell you about is that, you know, it's not just the calcium we have. There are calcium thieves, for example, caffeine, sodium, all these things leach calcium from our body. So, if you stop these things, you don't need so much calcium anymore. And what builds calcium is exercise, sunshine, all this is very, very important. So, that's all about, you know, my two favorite topics which I like to talk about, that is meat and milk. I'll talk to you about a few other things also. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, this has gone ahead. Let's go back. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about, so the fabul the Foxy 5 I said, meat and animal products we did. We talk about, you know, refined product. We eat a lot of that, white bread, white rice, white sugar. A refined food is something in which the outer fiber and the nutrients have all been taken off. It's just empty calories. It doesn't really serve any purpose. I would strongly recommend you reduce the consumption of these products. And then you come to processed food. What is processed food? Anything that comes in a can, jar, packet, bottle. Anything that has a label on it. What's wrong with this? Well, first of all, it's full of refined foods. They don't put whole wheat in it. They put, you know, white, white flour. 
Second of all, if you read the label very carefully, you will very often find the word hydrogenated. Hydrogenated, you know, oil, hydrogenated flour, whatever. Hydrogenated means the process by which the bubble hydrogen bubbles through fat to make it solid at room temperature. And this creates something called trans fats, which are again linked to heart disease, cancer. So if you find a label with hydrogenated written on it, run it the other way. And the point is that the advice I would give is if something has a label, don't have it at all, you know. It's, it's not really something which is good for you. So, uh, processed foods. And the last is, of course, deep fried foods. You know, uh, deep fried foods, well, yeah, everybody has vada pao, we have french fries, have samosas. I think there were samosas in the morning today. <laughs> okay, we did not have, like she said, I had the bananas. What's wrong with these things, you know? Well, again, there's a study done at Harvard by the uh, nutrition department of Harvard. They found that even consumption of fried foods once a week increases your, result, uh, increases your risk of heart disease and cancer. And if you have it daily, it's a lot worse. And why? Let's take potatoes. This is the most common thing we fry, right? Again, you can study, you know, there is a chemical called acrylamide which gets released when you deep fry potatoes. And the, the last part is the oil. When you reuse oil, you fry it once and then you remove it and you fry it again, the oil gets degraded. More of the oil gets into the food and gets into your body and you start ending up all these having health problems. So if you must eat fried food, you know, eat it at home where you are sure that the oil is fresh and it is, you know, it's not being reused. So these are the five foods, the foxy five, which we like to, you know, avoid. Or at least you consider all these things and then decide how much you want to consume. Now I'll go on to the, the fabulous five. These are five products which you should have a lot more of. And this is all again all common sense. This is not really a secret. But what's the secret is that how much good it does for you. The first is uh, fresh fruit. You know, full of natural simple carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, everything you can imagine. Uh, we don't eat enough of fresh fruits. Uh, the recommendation is four to five servings per day. One serving is about the size of one apple. So if you have something for breakfast and something for a snack, you know, so four or five servings a day, you are pretty good on fruits. The next fabulous five member is vegetables. You know, so excellent. Again, all the nutrients that fruits have got and minus the sugar, so it's even healthier. The only problem is in India, we tend to overcook our vegetables. In fact, to tell you the truth, Human beings are the only creature on the girl on the on the on the earth's planet on, the, on the God's creation on the, on the planet which sets fire to its food before eating. I'm talking about cooking, right? When you cook, you're setting fire to the food. When you set fire to something, the nutrient value drops dramatically. So do try to have uh, raw salads. You know, in both your meals, start off with a salad and then go on to your whatever the food you're eating. So of course you've got to be careful. The salad is properly washed, etc. Otherwise you don't eat it from the road. But as long as it's just washed in water, you know, you're pretty good to go. The next superfood is uh, whole grains. So, you know, whole uh, brown rice, whole wheat, jawar, bajra, nachni, rajgira, so many of them. These are powerhouses. They have your, they meet your full needs of carbohydrate. They've got proteins, they've got vitamins, they've got minerals, they've got all this kind of stuff. So, you should definitely have whole grains instead of, you know, having uh, the white flour. And the last two group, last two of the fabulous five are, you know, uh, Nuts and seeds, so proteins, so the excellent source of proteins, don't overeat, you know, have, uh, maybe a seven or eight pieces of almonds are good enough for a day. And sprouts, when you have sprouts, the sprouting process increases the nutrient value many fold. So these are the fabulous five. So then I think that's done as far as food is concerned. So I'll talk to you about, but you know, life is not just about food. You know, when I started on this, on this journey, I used to drive my wife crazy because uh, in the morning I think, what am I having for breakfast? And at lunch, I say, what am I going to have for lunch? And then lunch, I'm planning for dinner. So my whole life began revolving around food, which is not a very smart thing to do. There's more things to do in life. Just learn what it is that you have to do, do it, and then forget about it. And once in a while, you know, if you have a samosa, it's not going to kill you. But once in a while, if you have a french fry, it's not going to kill you. But the problem is that once in a while, you know, it's once in a while I have a samosa, once in a while I have french fries, once in a while I have a chicken, once in a while I have a can of coke, which has got nine tablespoons of sugar in it. And once in a while, this and once, and, and then it just goes on and on. And then, 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 you know, you're in, you're, you're in trouble. It's like, you know, you have an angle, you know, which is studying geometry. When you start off, the deviation is less. But as you go more and more, you know, you end up at a completely different place than when you wanted to be. So, <clears throat> apart from food, like I said, there are 25 other factors, but I don't have time to cover all of them. I'll just talk to you about four or five of them before I end my talk. So, the first, of course, is water. We just don't drink enough water. I mean, we drink Coke or we drink, uh, you know, maybe other stuff. In fact, I do, the, I, I do my whole talk, you know, at many places I've done the talk and people listen to me very carefully. And at the end of it, they ask me only one question. 
okay peter but what about alcohol you know is alcohol allowed on your system or not <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, uh, so but water is something which you need to drink and how do you know you know is it eight glasses is it 10 glasses oh, it's there's no rule like that it depends on each of us uh, a sedentary lifestyle somebody working out on the field but the the thing to examine is uh, your urine if the quantity of urine is copious if it's colorless you're doing good if it's scanty if it's yellow you need to drink more water don't wait for thirst thirst is an indication you already gone past the limit that is water and then sunshine you know sunshine in order to absorb even if you are drinking tons of milk you need vitamin d to absorb that calcium and the natural source of vitamin d is the sun you need to have at least 15 to 20 minutes of exposure of sunlight daily bare face face bare arms and legs maybe wear shorts or whatever tank tops or whatever it is and get out in the sun you know maybe not at 12 o'clock when it's blazing hot but in the morning 8 9 o'clock or whatever or the evening whenever you can manage i would encourage all of you whenever you go for your next medical test to get a vitamin d test done and you will find you know i would willing to bet that more than half or even 70% of all of us including me are deficient in vitamin d because we live you know in enclosed places we sit in our enclosed air conditioned house we get into a car we get into our office where are, and, and even when we are outdoors we are covered up like how i am not 1 inch of skin exposed we put sunscreen on whatever is exposed so we're not getting enough of you know vitamin d so that's uh, sunshine and then uh, exercise i don't need to tell you i'm sure all of you are very conscious about that but exercise helps strength stamina flexibility balance all these things exercise daily exercise 30 to 45 minutes your choice you do running cardio yoga whatever doesn't make a difference the next thing is uh, rest and sleep as a population most of us are sleep deprived and whenever we have anything the first thing we cut is sleep oh you want to watch a movie cut is sleep you want to go to your friends have a party sleep is cut you want to study sleep is cut you want to work late work late nights burn the midnight oil sleep is cut sleep is when the body rejuvenates recharges itself does all the repair work it's critical for health you know i myself try to sleep 7 to 8 hours. i go to sleep before my son and before my wife goes to sleep so i want my sleep you know so that and the last thing i want to talk about is uh, stress stress is a, men- a tremendous you know cause of lot of diseases and uh, there's nothing much we can do about that but uh, you know meditation uh, maybe something it's, it's nothing very complicated you don't need to go to a 10 day vipassana course so you could do that if you like but there are simple practices of i'm sure you can find somebody who can teach you it hardly takes 5 or 10 minutes a day and you know it helps to bring your stress levels down so that's the thing so uh, to conclude my talk uh, i'll talk to you about the action points so the foxy 5 you know be careful about animal product consumption dairy product consumption refined food you know which is processed foods and deep fried foods the fabulous 5 fresh fruits vegetable salads whole grains nuts seeds and sprouts and the friendly 5 drink enough water get daily exercise 15 to 20 minutes of sunshine 8 hours of sleep per day and meditation so that's all i had to say so you know uh the simple stuff and you know i started doing this at the age of 30 and for the last 20 years you know i have not really i think i must have gone to the doctor two or three times i don't fall sick i don't get cough cold fever forget about diabetes and you know in fact we are part of an ngo we help people reverse diabetes and reverse high blood pressure and reverse heart disease by following this this, this thing what i'm talking about you know the doctors would go out of business probably you know but uh, it's not going to happen because people don't you know when i go for talks and i tell people people say no i want to do tell me eat this tell me where this magnet tell me do this do that don't tell me to remove stuff from my diet you know what i am going telling people is don't do the remove all this stuff you know that's not a very popular thing but if you do it you know it's what will really uh, add years to your life and add life to your years uh, when we go ahead and buy you know uh, you must be seeing all these lic sell life insurance that's not really life insurance that's death insurance this is life insurance okay thank you very much